All right, welcome back to the Real Estate of Mind show where we help everyday people create wealth through real estate investing. And I am flying solo today. My name is Glenn Schwarm and I, uh, my beautiful bride, Amber, is not here today. So our guest is stuck with just me today, but I think we'll make it okay. So listen, it's a, it's a second time for having this guest on our podcast. And um, I've gotten to know him now. We were on his podcast and he does a great job, but he has a brand new book out he's promoting. So I want to make sure we talk about that. So we got Mr. Dave. David Richter here. Hey, David. Hey, Glenn. Thanks for having me. And yeah, I really wish Amber was here, but I guess this I know. Is I know you're stuck looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> I get that uh, a lot. So I know. Yeah. So, so you got the book Profit First for Real Estate Investing, right? Yes, indeed. And, yes, uh, that's coming that's, out here. I, yeah. Tell, let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. This, uh, I don't know if your listeners know about Profit First, but it's, I love that you have the real estate of mind because. Yeah. This is a mindset. We all hear from like Robert Kiyosaki's books and the richest man in Babylon's and those types of books. If you get into real estate investing that you're probably going to be geared towards or a mentor is going to point you towards like the rich dad, poor dad or whatnot. And they all talk about paying yourself first and, you know, making sure that you as a business owner is taken care of and like in order to create real wealth for yourself. And that's where Profit First, originally written by Mike Michalowicz, was not only that mindset of paying yourself first, but giving you a tactical and practical way to make it a habit, make profit a habit and paying yourself first a habit inside of your business. And that's where we started implementing the profit first system with real estate investors a few years ago. And that's where uh, about six months into it, I said, this is working. People are getting clarity on their finances, you know, less stress, more control over their business. And I said, I need to get this message out to the real estate investing world and like some, the way that we're setting it up. So that's when I went to Mike, and July 2, I remember that date and I uh, scheduled that meeting with him, sat down with him and over a Zoom call and said, hey, what do you think about Profit First for real estate investing? And he said, yeah, like, let's move forward. Let's do this. I think this would be a really good book to put, bring to the real estate investing world specifically. And he had already known about our business and you know, I kind of told him what we were doing. So he's like, yeah, let's do it. So then 14 months later here, we've got the book. I've got the book here on my shelf behind me. Yeah. So it's officially mm -hmm. coming out December 7th. So depending on when this airs and when you're listening to it, it could be out already on Amazon. It is on Amazon to pre-order. And you could go to simplecfobook.com for pre-order or ordering, depending on when you're listening to it. But yeah, super excited to get this out the door because it's been a long time in the making now. Yeah, no, that's great. So, you know, let's tell people about what that is, because I think sure. that, you know, as entrepreneurs, gosh, you know, I've been an entrepreneur my whole life, right? So I'm yep. 50, almost 53, yikes. And I started my first business at 19. So it's, I've always worked for myself, except for one year that I worked for somebody else. And then my brother had to fire me. That's a long story, but anyway, so it's the only job I ever had, right? <laughs> but um, but certainly uh, in as an entrepreneur, most entrepreneurs think they work, 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 and if something's left over, that's what they get to keep. Right. And the problem I think for most entrepreneurs, and I'll speak for me from early on, even some days now, you never know, some months, mm -hmm. right? You can, you know, it's feast or famine as an entrepreneur. I mean, yeah. I just, I, I don't care what level you're at. It's really feast your famine all the time in business. It just seems to be that way. And your concept is that if you don't carve your profit out first, if you don't prioritize your profit, you'll never have your profit. Yeah. Is that fair to say? That is very fair to say. I love that analogy of feast or famine because it's yeah. during, what are you doing during those feast times in order to prepare for the famine times? Cause you know, they're coming. Right. You know, I've recently, um, we're expanding both of my major companies, right? We have our speaking and education business that puts on the home flipping workshop. We have our flipping company doing hundred deals a year and we're expanding both of those. And over the past few months, we've had some cash flow stuff because when you're expanding, there's lots of stuff. Going on. Oh yeah. I was, able, I was able to look to my profit first account. I was going to borrow some money for one of the things I said, wait a minute, I got a chunk of change sitting right here. Hmm. And I'm like, I'm I'm not going to borrow it. I'm going to invest in myself. I'll pay myself back for it. But I, I was able to move that just, you know, just temporarily because I had to make yep. a little transition for cash, but I had it. Had I not started the profit first two years ago, wouldn't have had it. Right. right? And the, the best analogy that I can think of, like when I, when I heard him speak, I think it was, was he, he that spoke at our mastermind? Was it Michael that spoke? couple years ago. He did. Yeah. At Collective Genius. Yeah. yeah funny guy. Yeah. And um, that was the very first one we ever went to. Yeah. We were sitting there going, 
Well, that's interesting because my whole life, I've always waited to see what's at the end of the month. And a lot of times the end of the month comes and you don't have it. Mm-hmm. And as an entrepreneur, unless you're having, unless you're in the feast time, which, you know, most people in the famine time a lot, and then a big feast, then famine, famine, then feast, right? So yep. I remember hearing him talk about the toothpaste analogy, and that one stuck with me so strong. <laughs> but when you get a tube of toothpaste, yeah. you're, when you first get it, you're squirt and squirt, no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put some on yours, put some on mine, whatever. And all of a sudden you get to the end and you start realizing you have to ration it and you do, and you stretch that sucker out. You probably, you probably stretch that out just as long in the, in the last third of it, <laughs> you know, that you, that you took the first third, you know, for the yep. same amount of time. But, but when you're thinking about it, you can rationalize it better and you, you make it work. Yep. And it's the same thing with a budget, right? When you, when you, pay yourself first and you feel like you don't have the money, just like making that toothpaste tube work, you'll figure a way to make it work. When you look at the bank and go, well, a little tight here, a little tight there, but I can squeeze this or I'll do this or I'll hustle a little more here, but you've already put your profit aside. Right. right? Yeah. What do you find people are, what, what's, what's the pushback you get from some people? Do you get pushback or people like, that's a, I mean, no, no one ever says what a horrible idea, right? They always say it's a good <laughs> idea. They always say, David, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard. No one ever says that, right? But they do right. say, I'm sure you get some pushback. Like, I'd love to do that, but I just can't, right? Do you, do you get that? Oh, yeah. There's some people where they say, well, I'm not profitable right now. Like, how can I do this? You know, like profit first. I'm I'm struggling right now. It's, it's famine all the time. And usually that, you know, what my counter is to that is like, okay, well, we got to get you out of this. You know, like, how do you do that? It's by putting that profit first. It's by being able to get in that habit, even if it's a super small amount, if it's like less than a percent that you're just putting away from every single deal, you know, into a separate place in order to build that habit, that muscle of becoming profitable. And it's forcing you, if you already know you're, you're hurting, then you know that change needs to come. Anyway, that, you know, so there's, this is a way to tangibly give you an actual system to be able to help you during those feast and famine times, no matter which time it is. So that's probably one pushback I get is like, I'm not profitable. I can't start this. I'm like, okay, but it's, you're almost telling me why you should start it right now because you don't, because <laughs> you're not reason. profitable. Like you, we need to get you profitable. Another one is, this is more a practical one of the bank accounts. Cause like, I I need to set up how many bank accounts and a lot of people are pushing back. And I'm like, first of all, you wanted, you want a system for your finances. Like you've wanted to do something different. Don't you want accounts specifically set up for you? Like the profit account, the owner's compensation account, like owner's income tax, like those three accounts to set up are specifically for you, the owner. Like that is to make sure you're taken care of. And that like, like Glenn said that you can look one day and say, wow, God, I started this two years ago. Cause I had this chunk of change in there that I would have never had if I wouldn't have started this system. So it's like helping people realize that then we've had clients who were like, okay, you know, I guess I'll do it. And then now they're like, I'll never go back. I have 10 accounts right now. And I love the clarity that it's providing. I feel, they say, I feel like I have control over my business yeah. now. And that's what we love to hear. Cause that's when, that's when their decisions get better. That's when their confidence is boosted. That's when they now have the money in their accounts to like take vacations and do the things they want to. And I'm like, isn't it, isn't it crazy that a bank account can help you do this? So like, this is why we set it up, but yeah. it also puts teeth behind the mindset of paying yourself first. It's that practical step of saying, I've got a profit account now. Now I'll actually be profitable because I'm siphoning money into this account yeah. and really doing what everyone tell is telling me in all these books. And now I'm making it a habit inside of my business. It's so funny. It's not, this is what I think you can tell me if I'm wrong, but I don't yeah. think it's so much about the amount as about the habit. Oh yeah. Right? It's so much about just, I don't care if you put 0.05% away yeah. or 1% or 10 bucks. I mean, start with some habit, but there's some yes. habit that when you create the habit, you know, what, you know what I find is even better when you, you know, I have a CFO that runs things and I, I don't even see it. Yeah. I literally don't even see it. Like I, if you have somebody else do it, it's almost better if you could, well, as an entrepreneur, you don't have a, you don't get a payroll usually, you know what I mean? But it's you, right. usually people do that in the payroll, but where the money goes away, but it's, um, it's amazing. Tell our listeners, cause I know that like you and I know about this system and they're probably yeah. going, sounds great. What the hell are you talking about? Like what bank, how many bank <laughs> costs do I have to have? What, right. So, Give yeah. a, give me kind of give a high level of what it is, like the structure. Yeah. Is that cool? 
Yeah, that's very cool. So first of all, like I said, the mindset, let's talk about that briefly first. The mm. traditional way that we think as entrepreneurs and the way that we're kind of trained, you know, like just inherently from other people is sales minus expenses equals profit. I make a sale, I sell a property, I then turn around and pay everyone else and their mother. And then whatever I, whatever I've left over is for me. You know, that's gotta the fight, profit. Gotta fight with the contractor too. Gotta fight with exactly. the contractor and pay right. them extra. But that's the <laughs> exactly, exactly. So <laughs> that's where the profit first formula is sales minus profit equals expenses. I take a sale, I allocate that profit first and transfer that profit first into a separate account. And then what I have left over is to pay the expenses of the business and making sure that the business runs. And it's that mental shift. It's basically putting a formula to pay yourself first and what we're hearing in a lot of these different types of books. Yeah. That's why that doesn't stop there though. In order for you to get that mindset, it's good to hear. And you're like, Oh, that makes sense. Like what a lot of people say, like you said, they, Oh, that makes sense. This sounds good, but you know, I can't do this, but, but we hear that we hear that formula and it sounds really good. Like, okay, I can make that mental shift, but you really won't make that mental shift till you see it in action. You need to see it working. You need to see like Glenn did where he said, you know, now it's been two years. Look at this chunk of change we had in this profit account. Like, and I didn't have to stress about, it. I could go out in there and, you know, do what I needed to do. So what you do is you set up physical bank accounts, kind of like if you've heard of the envelope system for your personal finances, yeah. you do that for your business. And we suggest the foundational accounts across any type of business, any type of entity. And those are number one, the income bank account. That is literally just to hold your deposits. That is it. Nothing goes out of there. Nothing comes in besides your deposits. Then you transfer the money from that account to the other bank accounts, which the other four foundational accounts is number one, a profit account, number two, an owner's compensation account, and number three, the owner's income account. And I call those the golden trio, like Harry Potter and Star Wars, you know, like you've got those three main heroes inside of those stories that are always pushing good forward. Same thing yeah. in your business. Those three bank accounts should be pushing the actual, the good part of your story forward, the profitability, paying yourself, not being stressed out about if you can pay yourself, not being stressed out about at the end of the year, paying your taxes from your actual income from the business. So that's what those three accounts are for. Then the fifth account is the operational expense account, the OPEX account that you probably already have. That's a, all other outflows of the money are for that account. But those are the foundational accounts. I also add one for real estate investing, OPM, other people's money. Separate right. out lenders' money from nice. your own. So yes, you know, sure. like these five accounts are for operating my business, for my profitability, and to pay the expenses. This OPM is like if I'm doing a rehab or if I'm doing, you know, like whatever, a short term deal, then I get that money into that OPM account or a rehab account, whatever you want to call it. I call it the other people's money account. Yeah. Put it in there and then you use that to fund the rehabs until they're done. And then once you, once you make the sale, the sale goes into the income account. So that's the foundational accounts. That's where we see where people give us pushback. I'm like, oh man, so many accounts, but it's putting teeth to the mindset of paying yourself first and getting in. Like you said, Glenn, that's what I tell people. It's not really about the bank accounts. No, it's about the habit of yeah. paying yourself because so many people make horrible decisions in business, not because they're dumb because, or not because they're not, you know, they don't have the knowledge. It's because they're making decisions out of fear fear because they're not paying themselves. They're not actually doing, they're not living in their purpose and they're running around like a chicken with their head cut off, no control in their business. And so that's making them make every decision come from a place of fear and anxiety. And this system helps at least from the financial aspect, not worry about that. That's yeah. what this system does. I love how you, how you have a, a slant on this, that it's profit first for real estate investors. Cause you know, there is other money that goes through our accounts. Right? Oh, yeah. And money and that kind of stuff too. So I'm, I'm glad that you, you, um, you know, broke that down another step. I think that's important. And um, I was thinking as you were talking, I'm, we have a storm for the first time ever here that I, since I've been here in Florida, we just moved to the beach in Florida. So we live here, yes. but my profit first account, I did not label it profit first. I labeled it Florida beach house. Nice. Love did not that. have a beach house or one in mind, but I labeled it. And, and then I put it, here was the trick for me. I think you got to find what works for you in your world, right? I put mine, I, I have uh, multiple banks because we got lots of loans stuff going on. Yep. I put it in a bank that I don't really have access to. I mean, yep. it's really a pain to get to. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't have an ATM card. I don't have a checking account for it. 
I can go online and look at it, but I hadn't looked at it for months. And so I kind of forgot about it. And that's the best way. If you can sort of kind of, you know, yes. again, I had someone else doing it for me. So that makes life a little easier. So, but if, if you were to any level, if you're at any level in business and you have any kind of a controller, a bookkeeper, have them do it. I mean, that's my suggestion. Would you agree? I mean, have the, have somebody else help you with that system. Because if you're an entrepreneur, you probably struggle with details. I know I yes. do. So yep. have your bookkeeper, which a lot of people that are at, are at any level start to have some kind of a bookkeeper, whether you do a one or two mm -hmm. flips or whatever. Yep have your bookkeeper do that for you so you don't see it. And right. for me, I labeled it Florida Beach House and I, I was able to use that money for a significant down payment for my Florida Beach House. Yeah. And, and still had money, you know, and again, some companies I put less, some companies I put more, just depends on the profitability. But there's just something funny about putting that money aside that makes it grow. And it's, it's hard to explain to somebody else until you do it, right? Yeah, it is. And I love what you said there about team members. You need people to hold you accountable. With the money, it's very easy as uh, from as the owner just to take whenever, whatever, and it blows up. You know, you don't even know what you, the domino effect that you're creating there. And it's like making sure that you have a system in place that you've got some of those controls and making sure that you are, you know, that you're being held accountable to that. And on the flip side, not just of spending money, making sure you are paying yourself, like holding you accountable to the, your profitability and holding you accountable to, okay, this is how you're going to do a consistent draw, or this is what you need every month. Well, okay. Is this just what you need? Or is like, this was what would make you comfortable and like stress-free? Like, what is that number for you? How do we get you there as fast as possible? So it's like having those types of conversations too, from the financial side, because we go in with these businesses and no one has had that before of being able to just ask questions. They probably think is I'm stupid for asking this, you know, like, you know, don't other people know this, if they're a business owner, they probably already know this. And that's not the, tr no, that's not the not case. Not and that's, all. and we have people like that where we kind of have to pull that out of them. And it's like, no, like you come to us because we want to help you with these questions. You don't ever have to be embarrassed. This is a safe place. Like we know you weren't taught this in school, nor did you want to go and get your accounting degree. You know, like we totally get <laughs> no. that. So that's yeah. why we, we want to make sure you're, you get that help from your level and are able to ask those types of questions to make sure you're okay and on track. I think too, you know, once people read your book and kind of get in that mindset, you know, we're, we're the real estate of mind show, right? Once they have that mindset, you're going to, you may get pushback. I remember having pushback from my accountant going, I'm not going to open one more bank account. We have lots of bank accounts. Every time we have a loan, we have, you know, I don't even know how many right. bank accounts, probably dozens upon dozens of them because you have to for every loan you open yeah. and all that stuff. So we have all these bank accounts and, and she's like, uh, I'm not going to open it. And I had pushback and I said, yeah. So I love you, but I don't care what you think. We're going to open a bank account, right? I'm paying yep. you. We got to open a bank and we got to do this. And, that, and I, I end up, you know, making a little different kind of a modify the structure for myself, but yeah, but it's, but you may get pushback from other people in your life. Maybe a spouse might be a, might be a business partner, whatever. Yeah. But again, I think you've got to make sure that you, that you do that. Cause if you don't, I think you're going to be on that hamster wheel the rest of your life. Right. right. And that you'll, if you, we always say, if you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to keep getting what you're getting. Right. Exactly. I have a, I have a little section about that in the book. I call it the real estate rat race. It's so funny. Yeah. A lot of us have played cash flow from Robert Kiyosaki, that board game, or we've read those books and like, we see that wheel and all we want to get off of it with our passive income. And still as a real estate investor, we put ourselves into that wheel, but I think it's just a bigger, more complicated wheel, you know, that we get ourselves in if we jump into real estate without some type of system like this, because then, like you said, you're waking up every day on the hamster wheel, living deal to deal instead of paycheck to paycheck. Now it's deal to deal and you're yeah. just stressed out all the time. So I need to get Are out you, of there. Do you, do you encourage people once they get their profit account to a certain level, whatatever they want it to be, to invest that money? In, in, no, so like, or do you yeah. just keep it as cash or what, what do you recommend they do with it? There's a couple things that I love recommending to people is as you start to grow that profit account, we say that account truly is for the owner for their time involvement, their blood, sweat, and tears, and the risk of starting the business. So every quarter, you should look at that account and take up to 50% out 
for whatever the heck you want to do. I would not, the only thing I would say it's not for is to fund the operate, the normal business operations, because then you're just, then you're just fooling yourself that you're really profitable if you have to fund the regular operations. But if you want to take that out and invest in a house, or if you want to take that out and and buy a car for yourself or afford a beach house or whatever it is, take up to 50% of that and use it for whatever you want. Unless you're in a ton of debt, a ton of bad debt, I should say. If you're in real estate, you're already in debt because you've got houses and you know, you're probably, but I'm talking about bad debt. Like if you're credit cards and unsecured loans that you, that aren't tied to something, you know, that aren't tied to anything in your business currently, maybe you start paying that down, giving yourself a little breathing room. So those would be a couple of the suggestions, but the big one we try and get people to, which just this quarter, it's like, the, when we're recording this right now, it's October. And we, at the beginning of this month was the start of a new quarter. We met with one of the owners that we've been working with for about seven, eight months now. And so they're a couple quarters into profit first, and they were able to this quarter take out $50,000 out of their profit account and able to do whatever they wanted with it. And they're going to take that out and they're celebrating because they're like, number one, I've never really set this aside like this. Number two, we were profitable. So that was a lot of fun to be able to take up to 50% out of the account. And then I get to do whatever I want with it. And you know, I can take it guilt-free. This is from my profit account. This is not from my operational expense account. This is not from my pay myself bucket, you know, like for the work I do in the business or my tax account. I am okay to take this money out guilt-free and do what I want with it. So yeah. that's what we see when we I think people, account. yeah, people that let's talk about that for a minute. Cause you said you have a pay myself account. Cause it, cause if you're working in the business, you should get paid like an employee gets paid in the yes. business. Now most, most business owners don't. Right. And, and, and I, and I think, you know, if you look at the stats of, of successful businesses, right. I, what is it? I forget what the numbers are, but some crazy amount, 90 some percent, you know, never make it in the first year and to go 10 years, yes. that's, that's an even farther thing, you know, and even business to grow. So, so people, it's it's not easy to get there. And I think one of the reasons is, is psychologically speaking, when you work your ass off for years and don't get paid, it wears on you. Yeah. And it wears on your relationships. Let's talk about that, right? Yeah. That wears on your relationships, which causes, I'm sure, I'd go into bet anything. The divorce rate is much higher in entrepreneurs. I'm one of them. So is Amber. We both were divorced before. So, and I, a lot of my friends, I made the same way because, and I know- yep grinding in those early days and not getting paid just adds such stress to your life. And people yeah. don't realize the cost of that. <laughs> it's a, it's a complete is... game changer. I, you know, listen, speaking for me personally, I even, you know, I had to, I had two kids and my first wife, thankfully we all get along very good in my family and my, my ex-wife actually moved here uh, to, to Florida and she's got a house up the road. And so, um, and my, so my daughter still goes back and forth, but listen, that cost me some time with my kids, right? Cost me having my kids going back and forth. And as good as we, as good as we get along, it's still not, I'm not with my kids all the time, right? right. So there's, there's a cost. There's a real yeah. cost that people don't understand by not getting your finances straight early mm-hmm. in your business. And I, I don't think that people take into consideration that cost. It's not just money. Yeah. Matter of fact, money is the least part of it. It's exactly. Everything else around you that hurts in your health and your, just your friggin' sanity. You know, yeah. and you're, and I'm sure, I'm sure that takes years off your life. I'm sure right. it's like, like smoking yes. cigarettes, right? You probably go, yep, yeah, there's seven minutes. Yeah. With a business owner, you're like, there's 10 minutes, there's an hour. <laughs> that was like two years. That was a yeah. terrible one. You know? yeah. so, so that's what it feels like. But I think that people don't realize that there's so much more that you're investing. When you're investing in yourself, there's so much more that you get out of that. When you, I always say to people, the best investment you can ever make is in yourself. Yeah. And I, I was just telling um, one of my good friends, one of our investors, actually, she called this morning and she was talking through some stuff and I kind of walked her through. She said, well, thank you for the therapy session. I said, no problem. I said, here's a book you should read. And I sent it off to her and she, uh, she said, this is great. She said, I'm going to invest the $18. She, she put LOL. She goes, you probably spend 30,000 a year on, on this stuff. And I said, actually it's between my masterminds, my <laughs> coaching, my, um, trainers, my every, everything else that I have, it's probably more like 200 to 250 a year. I said, right. between, yeah. So between yep. all the, all that stuff I have for all my companies, I said, so I said, well, I must really screwed up LOL. But then I realized, but it's because I invest in myself that I get a higher return. I think on my life, not that my life is yeah. perfect, but every time I get down on myself, one of my, one of my closest friends goes, you know, you got it better than about 99% of the people. So shut up. And I'm like, right. all right. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> it so, is so true. Yeah, I, I guess my point at that little tangent was about there's such a value in investing in yourself that people just, I don't think that people take the time. And even, even I have had struggles in the past thinking about what is the actual return when I invest in myself? When I am mm-hmm. at peace, am I, a, am I a happier human being? Therefore, the people around me happier? Are my family and friends happier to be around me? Am I not a pain in the ass on my phone all the time, being a jerkwad, not listening and being at the, you know what I mean? Or am I really there? Cause, cause I can have that peace inside knowing that, well, if the crap hits the fan, I'm covered. Yeah. I'm good. I got it. I, I'm, I'm good because I've been putting that little nest egg away in the back, you know? Yeah. So. Uh, I totally agree. And that's where, where you said it's the, sometimes the intangibles are, mm. way, they are way more important. There's cool. a tangible way to be able to pay yourself and to say, this is what I need per month. Like whether you think it's high or low or whatever, this is what I need as a human being in order to survive or thrive or whatever right now. And so once you can practically take care of yourself like that from your business, then that takes one less stress off of you. That's what we see. So that way you have that capacity. It frees up that mindset. It helps you be more abundant. It helps you seek out better deals. It helps you seek out the other people that are in that same frame of mind. And you know, you get that. And so if there's a practical step you can take, then it's the, then it's the harder part working on yourself, like the emotional, your emotional intelligence, how you communicate with other people, how you accept and forgive yourself, you know? So it's like, if you can take a stress off because it's distracting you all the time, because you're so stressed about your money, Why would you not do it in order to grow into the person that doesn't have to worry, not only worry about the money, but then is becoming the best human that they can possibly become. I always say money will not bring you happiness, but the lack of money will bring tremendous stress. And it's very difficult to focus on the important things when you're covered in stress. Yes. So so it's very, it's very difficult. I've been there. I've, I've had major, you know, when I was, when I was 30, so, or not when I was 30, when I was 20, 30 years ago, I went through a couple bankruptcies. I had foreclosures. I had yep. a car repossessed. I had some, you know, slept in house with no power. I've been through some really, really tough times financially. And I share that a lot of my workshops I do. And, and people are always like, what? I'm like, yeah, so don't come complaining about, I don't know how tough it is. Cause you don't know. I do know. Yeah. But I also know that it's, you cannot focus on anything worth any, like if you even try to focus on your relationship, when you are so broken, the phones are ringing and collectors are calling you and you're losing everything. How can you just go, hey, let's have a nice dinner, honey. <laughs> right. you, you, you know, the whole dinner, you're yep. thinking, I wonder if my credit card is going to work. Oh my right. God, I wonder if it's going to yep. work. And God forbid friends are there and they're like, you're thinking, I should pick up the bill, but I can't afford it. You know, there's yeah. all these thoughts that go through our head and people don't realize that. And I, you know, having a, having a system like you help people install can really get them to another level. I think that's the cool part. I want to sort of, uh, bring this home a little bit. You you help people do this, right? Yeah. You didn't just write a book, man. You do it. You live it, yeah, right? Exactly. We do Tell it. What I, you do and stuff, you know. Huh. And what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Like I have someone on my team that helps us with this internally as well too. But we have a fractional CFO service that helps investors implement profit first get the clarity on their numbers, give you that control back. It's really all about control, giving you that control back in your hands to be able to make the decisions to know that you can pay yourself and make sure that you have systems set up in place to get that stress off your back. So that's what we do. Fractional CFO service for real estate investors and other business owners. That's why I wrote the book too. Cause if I can't serve everyone right now, because I don't have a million team members, I at least get the book and get in, know that there's hope for you hope for, you know, like I can start setting this up and getting into like, we've talked about here, the habit of paying yourself first. So yeah, that's my company, simple CFO solutions, uh, helping quite a few entrepreneurs, business owners, real estate investors right now get on track with their money. Well, I always, I always love hanging out with you, man, and talking. It's always fun. We always have a good time. I know Amber's not here. We still had a good time. Right. Yeah. I think we still had a good time. Amber's not the only fun person (laughs) out here, you know, (laughs) usually we fight for half the session. So that's usually what's going on there. So (laughs) no, it's been great having you on today, man. And I'm, um, I encourage all listeners out there to really take this to heart. This is one of those things that's that you may dismiss and go, yeah, I'll, I'll get to that one day. If you do that, one day will never come. The day will come when you need money and you don't have it. And you're going to wish that you had done this, right? This is probably, I would, I would, this is a pure guess. We didn't discuss this beforehand, but I bet you that a lot of people that you work with have some comment that sounds something like, man, I wish I had done this sooner. (laughs) I was just thinking that I would, because 
Well, let me take it a step further. I had on my podcast, the Profit First RII podcast of someone on there that's successful in real estate who's implemented Profit First and one time calculated if he would have started like when he first started real estate investing years ago, he would have had $5 million cash more in his account. So it was like from deal number one, you know, like start at deal number one. And that's exactly once people get this set up, that's the number one comment we hear is I wish I would have started this sooner or when I first started. So that's where it's like, wherever you are today, one deal or a thousand deals, like make, cause this, the end result of this is more money in your bank account and less stress to be able to focus on what you want to focus on. And then why you started your business. So yeah, that's the number one thing we hear. That's when not a tough sales we, pitch. More oh, money yeah. and less stress. Nah, I don't want that, David. Come right. on. I don't want it. Quit pushing. Right? Quit pushing me, man. Yeah. I don't want that. I, yep. I like being broken under stress. Come right. on, I like that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, there's some there's some owners that I could probably say, yeah, you I probably know. like being on the edge all the time. And I get yeah. it. It's like, but if you don't want to live there, we can we yeah, for sure. Well, this has been great, man. I think you've been really helpful to a lot of people. And I think a lot of people are listening today. I hope that you guys have taken notes and listen and go get the book. And if you need a, you need a, a fractional CFO service, you know, that's, that's how we started. Actually, we're, we're hiring a new controller, a full-time controller right now awesome. because our CFO, fractional CFO, just we've stretched her way too thin and we yeah. have been with me for eight years. Right. So right. long, but, but someone like you who understands the real estate space and that kind of stuff, I think that, how, so let me, let me ask this question to promote your service a little more. How, how small of clients do you work with? I mean, you know, where, what's kind of your sweet spot? Where do you work? Our sweet spot, someone usually making gross profit about 500,000 a year. So that's usually where we are. And then up to right now, I think one of our biggest clients is about 10, $11 million a year. So it's really those, the range there in on the profit lower. profit or sales? No, in sales. So like, if this is their saying, like, gross sales. You, you work with guys make $11 million a year. And that's just like, that's like your cap. That's <laughs> enough for me. I don't want to. <laughs> no, right. No, so in that's gross, a, in gross revenue. Yeah. in gross revenue. So like if you're flipping houses, you know, making 30,000, we're using that 30,000 number, not what you're, you know, after you pay everyone else or whatnot. So. Sure. Okay. Got it. All right. Well, that's good to know. Cause I think we have a lot of, we have a lot of listeners that are probably that might, some have just started their flipping journey. Some are mid and they yeah. start to, make you start doing two, three deals a year. That's right in that sweet spot for you, yeah, right? It is. And if you, if you aren't at that spot, that's why I wrote profit first for real estate investing. So yeah. I want to make sure you can at least set the foundation, get the foundation laid. If nothing else from this, from this podcast, set up one account profit and transfer 1% of your income Absolutely. into that account. Like just start something, start where you can and get into that habit. So no matter what size you are, even if you can't work with us, I get it. That's why I wanted to write the book and just, here's the information, please take it and use it. I, uh, I'm i thinking back to when I first started my my journey of you know self-improvement and I was about 30, uh, late 20s, 30, late 20s maybe. And I read several books that talked about this. They didn't call it profit first. They didn't call it that, but they, but they talked right. about paying yourself first. Very yep. common, but having somebody help you implement it and actually breaking it down a little deeper is so much better. Because I'm looking back there and again, I do not live my life with regrets, but if I could change one thing, there's been, I don't know how many millions tens, hundred, now nah, it's been a lot of millions that have gone through my bank account that if I just siphoned off a little bit more off the top, put that to the yep. side, I'd be on the beach talking to you. I actually am on the beach, but a different beach maybe. So, <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, so no, maybe I wouldn't be working anymore. I don't know, but, it's, but it's awesome. But listen, great stuff. Um, make sure they know how to get a hold of you again. How can they reach sure. you again? SimpleCFOSolutions.com. So simple CFO, like chief financial officer, solutions.com. And to get the book, you can go to SimpleCFOBook.com. That's where we've got that or, you know, bulk buys and stuff and bonuses at that page. So if you just want to check that out and get the book, Profit First for Real Estate Investing. Cool. And share this into your friends too. Even the concept really would work with anybody, even not, not just a real estate Correct. investor. Yep. So I mean, if you it's... have friends that are just employees, I mean, just, you just get, I would just encourage you to share this with any of your friends. You guys are listening now. If you, if you hear this and go, if you have vendors, what about What's your that? contractors? Like if you're yeah. working in fix and flips, give it to your contractors. They probably live deal to deal and project to project, you know, Listen, it's like David, those types David, of people. Let, let the contractors stay hungry. We need them <laughs> to stay hungry. Okay. So. <laughs> I, you just don't want them to create that Ponzi scheme of like, right, okay, now right. the project for the, 
you know, this one for that one. And yeah. So. Oh my gosh. Well, good. Dave, this has been great, great, uh, great talking to you today. And I wish you much success with the book, man. It's going to be, a, it's going to be a hit. I'm sure. Awesome. Thanks, Thank buddy. you very much, Glenn. All right, guys. We'll see you on the next Real Estate of Mind show.